Today we're talking about the multi-level marketing company, Northstar. Now the name suggests direction and guidance, but is it steering the way to health and wellness or is it leading us into murky waters? Let's talk about it. Hi folks, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Kat. I'm a licensed registered dietitian nutritionist and on this channel I like to talk about weight inclusive and weight neutral focused approaches to health as well as diving into scammy and in my opinion unethical nutrition related businesses products, mostly nutrition related MLMs and other fear mongering nutrition related claims. Now today we are doing a dive into the nutrition MLM multi marketing company called North Star. Now this is a somewhat newer company. It is a couple years old. I actually had not heard of it before. Megan Williams actually reached out to me and shared with me a video that we're about to watch. And as a side note, I did want to quickly shout her out. She is the author of Cutting Ties, Healing After MLM. I'll have that link down below. That is a self-guided workbook for people who are in the process of leaving their multiple marketing company. She is a mental health professional. And when someone is leaving multiple marketing, there's a lot to unpack. So I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Megan, for sending me the video that we'll be watching because I had never heard about this company before. The goal of this video is to provide information for people who are maybe wanting to join the company, specifically Northstar, or others who are currently in and are maybe putting their feelers out for potentially leaving. Now, because of these goals, I'm going to give a brief overview on multi-level marketing as a structure and the concerns around that. So multiple marketing often raises concerns based on the primary way that people get their income, primarily through who is recruited rather than those sales coming from people who are not affiliated or they're outside of the company. Most of the income is coming from people who are sales people. This model can create unsustainable business practices and financial instability when it comes to participants, especially those who join late. Now, when it comes to nutrition MLMs, there is another layer of concern when it comes to health claims and the promotion of products that are maybe not so evidence-based and that rely on a lot of personal experience in order to sell or what is called like anecdotal information in order to make the product sound really good and to create this kind of fear of missing out so that people will purchase a product. Now, in general, when it comes to nutrition related MLMs, I think it's important to remember that although there can be some evidence as far as efficacy goes or how individual ingredients work in various products, the benefits of a supplement also depend on the quantity in there, the amount of that specific ingredient in there. Sometimes they'll see a supplement with a specific ingredient that they're making a lot of claims on. And when you look at the actual studies, that ingredient was used in a different amount for that study. And so it's not evidence-based in the amount that is used in that supplement. Additionally, the presence of a potentially effective ingredient in a specific product that doesn't guarantee that the product itself will be effective. Now, given the potential for bias, conflicts of interest, and the lack of oversight or lack of regulation for supplements in general, I encourage consumers to really be careful when deciding whether or not they want to join a nutrition-related MLM company or to support them in any way. As with any supplement, please be sure to consult with a healthcare provider, with your doctor, someone who knows your medical history, someone who knows of any conditions, or medications that you're taking. Does not matter if that product is all natural or whatever, it can still interact with certain conditions or medications. And so that is something that needs to be taken into context, into consideration across the board, MLM or not. Now, my main focus when it comes to nutrition MLMs within videos is to talk about the products, but I do wanna give a little bit of background to the company itself. Just briefly, this is directly coming from Behind MLM. I will leave that article linked down below. It's a little bit older of an article because some of the products are a little bit different now, but the founder information is what I'm referring to specifically. And I want to talk about this a little bit because of the video that we'll be watching. So stick with me. 
So the behind the MLM article is called North Star Review, Digital Profit Scanners Launch Own Opportunity. Now heading of North Star are co-founders Ricky Villanueva and Demetrius Ceruno. And as of 21, Ricky, who is on the right, he was a green diamond in digital profit. Now according to the Digital Profit Review, green diamond is the highest affiliate rank within that company. So one of the co-founders, he's coming from being the highest level at another MLM company. Now, allegedly, Digital Profit ran a trading bot investment opportunity spanning four layers of securities fraud. In late August, it was revealed Digital Profit's trading bot had caused hundreds of thousands of dollars in losses. Again, per this article, Villanueva appears to have left Digital Profit shortly after ranking at Green Diamond in May. And I'm not sure where year this is, so it was just a May. Northstar's website domain was registered on June 23rd. Prior to Digital Profit, Villanueva promoted Modare and Be Epic, which I have not looked into Be Epic, but I do have several videos where I've covered Modare. I'll leave one of them at least linked. Now the other man, Demetrius, he appears to have started out in Kiani, which that is another one that I haven't really covered. Now they worked together in both Be Epic and Digital Profit. Now, according to this article, again, Be Epic has some sort of deal with Digital Profit. Digital Profit markets Be Epic products, likely in exchange for funneling Be Epic affiliates into Digital Profit the article and the goal of mentioning kind of that background that history was kind of to provide information as to how those two probably met and were working together and then went off to create North Star. So now let's watch the video that Megan sent me because in my opinion this puts out this kind of just hits differently after that information knowing the information about those co-founders again per the article. I was the youngest of eight kids. We grew up from very humble beginnings, and, and by humble, I mean almost National Geographic humble. I'm 33 years old. I am originally from South America, Peru. One day there was a uh, bomb threat made to my school by terrorists, and that's when my parents said, hey, we're immigrating to the United States of America. Both of my parents were entrepreneurs. They actually owned a small business. My mom owned a dance studio, and my father actually owned a karate studio. I was born and raised in Chihuahua, Mexico. We got to run free from sun up to sundown, just living the life. A lot of people want change, but they don't change what they do. Right? If you want to change the things in your life, you have to change the things in your life. And if you want to be in a different place, you got to do things differently. I just didn't want a boss. I, I, I constantly got fired from jobs. I, I hated being there. Getting fired from jobs, maybe people thought, oh, this kid doesn't like to work. If that wasn't true, I loved to work. I just wasn't passionate about what I was doing. We got home from our honeymoon and Ricky tried to go back to his job, which was a nine to five. And he was like, I got fired. And I was like, for what? You literally just started. And he was like, I really want to do network marketing full time. We decided to go all in on ourselves and start our own company. The name of our company is North Star. So at North Star, we really designed everything for the masses to, to create that extra $500,000, $1,500 a month in a fun, simple way. I can't tell you what a blessing network marketing has been in our lives. I remember being a very small child and thinking, yeah, I want to do that. I want to be a network marketer. I am going to marry someone who believes in the industry. And I mean, that set the whole tone for my whole adult life. At the end of the day, for me, it comes out of freedom. The ability to do what I want with who I want, whenever I want, wherever I want, at any given moment. Uh, that's why I chose this industry. I want people to experience freedom, whatever that means to them. Time freedom. I want them to be able to do the things they love, spend time with the people they love and just have more options in life. So being a part of our company, it's not being a part of our company, it's us being part of you. It's not about us, it's about you. It's about how can we as a company help you create your North Star. We're a company that people can get excited about, they can plant their flag, they can attach their hopes and dreams to, and they can trust in the fact that we're always gonna put them first. Let's go find your North Star.
There's a lot in that video to unpack. We're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on that, but some of the things like the income claims, what seemed like income claims to me, and the idea that like this was the answer to doing whatever you want, like whenever. And this is another reason, one of the main reasons why I wanted to talk about this company when I saw that video, because like they're targeting a lot of my people, like mentioning locations, things like that. Mexican Americans, Chicanas, indigenous, and like outside of that as well too, but like just people who have a dream wanting to provide for their family. A very understandable dream and just dreaming of having the means of providing and like North Star meaning like guiding light or just a guidance to put all of that into a company. Something that is as unstable as multi-level marketing is because it is so reliant on other people. Like it would be one thing in my opinion if you were able to be an affiliate for a company and sell product and you could like reach the highest ranks or levels just by selling to people and not bringing on other people, not recruiting other people to do the exact same thing. But with multi-level marketing, that's that's why it's called multi-level. You have to recruit. In order to make it up to the highest ranks, you really have to sell the dream. You have to really encourage your team and consistently sell them the dream rather than focusing on like the actual product. I remember when I was in multi-level marketing and one of the many kind of red flags was when I was like, yeah, I do wanna you know, grow my business. The top up line, like the person who is all the way at the top in my team line, she was telling me how I really need to focus on recruiting stop focusing so much on trying to sell the product itself and begin to focus more so on selling the opportunity. Just add that to the list of a whole bunch of red flags, but that was definitely one of the biggest red flags to focus on selling the opportunity rather than the products. Now let's talk a little bit about the products. So they have a couple or a few different products. They have one that is called NCT and they have a formula specifically for him, for her, and for everyone. And they're a little bit different. They have some similar ingredients, but they also have more like unique blends between each of them. Now when I was looking at all of the ingredients, so what I do is I take those ingredients like one by one and then I will reference them to various different websites. I'll put up a list of the ones that I often will refer to. Sometimes all of them will provide information on all of them. Sometimes I'll just be able to find them on one. It really just depends. And this is one of the reasons why it takes a little bit longer to put these videos together rather than just like a reaction video or something like that. As like an overview, if you want a long story short, there's a lot of ingredients in all of these products. Those claims are typically from what I found coming from small studies. And I understand the challenges in studying a lot of these individual ingredients. Like I wish that we could get more studies going on a larger scale with a lot of ingredients that we would typically find in supplements because that would help with, it would make my job a lot easier. And it would also help, I think, a lot of people to know like what is going to work and without wasting their money and without relying on maybe spending something and having it actually be like placebo effect. They can have some evidence, but that does not mean that just because it did XYZ in a study of 14 people in a four week span, we can't extrapolate that put that together with other ingredients with similar studies and say that this is going to be the effect of that. I know that that's not what people want to hear, but when we are talking about nutrition, I try to stay as like evidence-based as I can. And so I need to say like, yeah, there are gonna be some studies, but we have to look further than that and look at how many people were in the study, how long it was, how the overall study was prepared and implemented in order to make these claims. And from what I saw on the website and in just listening to when I was doing like information gathering for this, I think that some of the claims that are being made by the owners and distributors might be a a little far-fetched. I would like to be on the safe side, tell them to use more words like may, 
potentially kind of thing. And when we're talking about application, my question is always like, what else can we do in like, what are the goals? What are the reasons why you're wanting to try the specific product? Are there other things that we know are like so much more evidence based and maybe like at a lower cost that we can do and implement that we have a better chance at getting closer to those goals rather than relying and doing this kind of monthly auto ship kind of supplement thing. And when we look at these supplements, we see a lot of proprietary blends where we're not able to see the exact amount of the ingredients within there. And so it's really hard to see, is that an amount that is evidence-based? Because yes, while this specific ingredient might help with XYZ, we know that we need to have 500 milligrams or whatever, but in this proprietary blend, there is five different ingredients and there's 800 milligrams in there. And maybe that ingredient that we know works around best 500 milligrams. If that is like the fourth ingredient in that blend and the whole blend is 800 milligrams, we know that it's not going to meet that amount, that 500 milligram amount that is evidence-based. So I'm just gonna refer to some of my notes when looking at the label. So they do have a performance blend in there, a super hormone blend in there. The performance blend, it has chlorogenic acid, butyrate, that's blended together as like a trademark ingredient. Now, chlorogenic acid, that's that's commonly found in things like green coffee beans. There might be some mild weight loss effects and antioxidant properties. It can cause some increased heart rate or interactions with certain medications. Limited evidence suggests that it may have some health benefits, but the evidence is not strong and more research is needed. You're gonna hear that a lot in this video. But it's found in things like coffee, green tea, some fruit as well, like apples, pears, tomatoes, blueberries, strawberries, also in potatoes. So part of that question is also like, if you already have a varied kind of intake, is it something that's gonna be the addition of like beneficial? We don't know, like we don't know with evidence, current evidence. The butyrate part of that, that is sometimes used for like weight purposes, weight change purposes. There was a rat study that showed that maternal butyrate supplementation induced insulin resistance associated with enhanced intramuscular fat deposition in the offspring. So again, we're seeing some studies with like opposite outcomes. Another ingredient was phosphatidylcholine, which if you've taken anatomy and physiology, like probably like that sounds familiar, as important for cell membrane integrity and brain health. It's generally well tolerated, but high doses could lead to gastrointestinal issues. But when I saw this, I was like, we typically will get enough of that from food. We can get that in things like eggs, grains, meat, soybeans as well. And food sources are typically going to be the best sources of those. Ashwagandha is another ingredient. Now there are a lot of inconsistencies in the research. I know that is a very popular ingredient, especially right now. It does seem to help with the reduction in cortisol levels. And and a growing body of research supports the efficacy of ashwagandha when it comes to like sleep quality, overall like sleep time. So there is inconsistencies in the research, but the more positive research seems to be around like stress and sleep, but it does not seem to have the same effect on everyone. They also have green tea extract in here, which does provide some antioxidants. There's potential metabolic benefits, but not in an amount that is like substantial. There is African mango extract in here. There is currently only low quality evidence to support any claims around weight loss. For the Siberian ginseng root, the results around that, around like stamina and energy is inconsistent. And sometimes for those who it does help with stamina and energy can cause some sleep disturbances and like hypertension. So definitely if that is in kind of your history, I would not recommend. I also wanted to say, and I am gonna butcher this, Terraria morifica, that contains phytoestrogens and may help to alleviate some menstrual symptoms, but the long-term effects and safety profile are not well understood at this time, especially concerning hormone sensitive conditions. There is currently no evidence to support the notion that this herb is somehow safer than estrogen replacement therapy, so the benefits and the risks should be seen as interchangeable for the time being. I also wanted to touch on the berberine that is in here, which that is one that I keep seeing like popping up various places. It seems to be the next like super supplement marketing wise. It can inhibit several different enzymes when it comes to medications like drug metabolism. So there's definitely a risk of interaction there. Without knowing the specific amounts of each 
each ingredient though it is impossible to discuss like the efficacy of it now they do have the powder for him they have a lot of the same ingredients that we discussed but they do have a he-man hormone blend and the evidence that I found for these was also very limited due to the lack of published controlled trials they also have a for everyone blend and that one's a little bit different it has what they call a pre-pump blend now that has things like beet juice powder in it beta alanine there's some evidence there around like performance I don't see this as like a pre-workout though but that's typically like what you would find those ingredients in there's a digestive health blend in here which we've talked a lot about digestive enzymes but typically if digestive enzymes are beneficial for you my question is why and while that why could be helped with something like an enzyme blend it could be a sign of something that a doctor really needs to be following maybe there is pancreatic insufficiency for example and so we want to know why we're not producing these digestive enzymes rather than just providing these digestive enzymes there's a jitter-free energy blend though individual tolerance to I mean there's caffeine in there so it's that's just gonna depend on the person there are some of those similar ingredients like the chlorogenic acid and the butyrate that we spoke about and then they have a blend that is focused around like eye health which it contains antioxidants that are known to support eye health now they also have what is called reboot capsules the main concerns that I saw in here were the citrus orontium specifically that's really used more in like weight loss supplements but it's one of the more controversial ones because of potential side effects especially when taken with other like caffeine products it is also known as bitter orange it goes by some other things as well but basically when taking it some of the potential side effects this is not across the board I am just concerned about like potential side effects that could happen and when I was looking at that ingredient some of the potential side effects included things like high blood pressure potentially like a stroke or heart attack issues and from that ingredient specifically when either taken on its own or with like other caffeine supplementation and so that was one of the ingredients where I had more concern over that's not the same thing as saying that you know everybody who has that is going to experience that this is still going to be a rare thing but I just think it's important to be aware of some of the like potential side effects especially when taking something that is not like necessary if it was like a medication that you have you're having to take or something like that there are different things that you can do to help like reduce that risk overall right but you still might need to take a specific medication because of that for like overall health purposes but if it's something that is not necessary that's where I think more of those potential side effects are a little bit like more concerned maybe not more concerning but definitely just need to be taken into consideration and then they have a coffee and creamer which also includes that chlorogenic butyrate complex they really like that blend and so I don't know if the people are who are using the, these products I don't know if they're taking like just one of the ingredients daily or all three of them daily but they are getting a lot of those specific ingredients in conclusion these products are marketed in ways that I don't think are evidence-based with robust evidence there is also the potential risks for medication interactions and condition interactions my concern with this specific company is that they are targeting people in vulnerable situations people who just have dreams who are trying to provide for their families which that is a common criticism of multi marketing all right so that wraps it up for this video if you do have any questions feel free to leave them down below or reach out to me when I do these deep dives my large question overall is is this something that I would feel ethically like comfortable recommending to someone else and the answer with these specific products is no based on the research but then also with those potential side effects and interactions I think there are so many different ways that we can focus on health improve health that are evidence-based and don't require the purchase of supplements on like a monthly recurrence all right thank you so much for watching please leave a like if you like this video make sure you're subscribed i would greatly appreciate that and remember you can strive for health without subscribing to diet culture i'll see you later